On behalf of the four million members of the Alliance for Retired Americans, I'm proud to support Senate Bill 3217. It's time for certain senators to act in the best interests of people and not profits. Seniors are struggling to get by in today's economy, and they are the victims of years of unchecked greed and abuse on Wall Street. The stock market plunge and the collapse of housing values have combined to devastate their retirement security. There's not been a lot of attention in this, in this whole financial crisis to what's happened to senior citizens. We know about lost jobs in Toledo. We know about lost homes in Cleveland and Dayton and Cincinnati. Um, we don't, and we know about lost wealth, but we don't think and talk enough about and pay enough attention to what's happened to so many senior citizens, people who have worked their entire lives to have a decent, not a, not a wealthy retirement, but a decent retirement. When lending institutions, when brokers who are part of that shadow economy in the unregulated sector of our economy took advantage of retired citizens, people living on fixed incomes. Our bill does a number of things which we think minimize that from happening again. First of all, requiring that those unregulated areas of our economy will be regulated. No longer a shadow economy that can operate, where literally brokers had as part of their website the first instructions to their brokers. Convince the borrower you're their financial advisor. Uh, those days have to stop. Seniors are increasingly the victims of financial scams and marketing abuses. They are looking to the federal government for help. And this legislation would do just that. It would require that the terms and the conditions of loans and credit cards be written in language everyone understands. It would put in place strict new rules to protect seniors from gimmicks and predatory lending. And it would create a powerful new federal watchdog to stand on the side of consumers. And obviously retirement incomes again as well. To see to it that people aren't allowed to turn these investment institutions into casinos. For people's retirement, their hard-earned income. A 20% decline. Uh, in the retirement incomes over the last 18 months. 11 to $13 trillion in lost wealth in this country in 18 months. So I'm pleased to be standing here with Barbara, with Sherrod Brown, who's worked very, very hard on these issues in our committee, to say we're going to stand up. We can't stop another economic crisis from happening in our country. That will happen someday again. But we can minimize the impact of that crisis and to see to it that we don't have the 8.5 million jobs lost, the 7 million homes that went into foreclosure, the 30% decline in the value of homes, the 20% decline in the retirement incomes of people who depend upon that to make ends meet. Now, so today I wanted to focus on what happens to retirees and our determination to see to it they never get disadvantaged again because of what Wall Street and their supporters around the country were able to be able to engage in. In December, uh, the Republican leader in the House of Representatives from my state convened 100 bank lobbyists to figure out how to try to defeat this bill. Delay, uh, delay, obstruct any way they could. Just two or three weeks ago, uh, Senator McConnell, the Republican leader in the Senate, and John Cornyn, the Republican um, campaign, Senate campaign chairman, went to New York and met with 25 hedge fund and other Wall Street executives, again, to find ways to delay and undermine and obstruct us moving forward in this bill. The story is we want to be bipartisan. We want to work with them. But if bipartisanship to Republican leaders means you bring Wall Street to the table, you bring the Wall Street banks um, a, a, into the room and let them help the right legis help to write the legislation and then slap a bipartisan label on it and call that cooperation. That's not what we're doing. What we're doing, what Chris Dodd's doing, what Leader Reid is doing is bringing this legislation to the floor. It will be a good pro-consumer bill. It will deal with the fundamental problems of derivatives, give consumers a place at the table and get the information out that consumers need in order to judge these contracts. It will help, though, it will help people get a fair deal from the financial service industry, and it will make our country ultimately much more prosperous from, from service industries to manufacture because we'll have a financial system that will serve Main Street rather than Wall Street. 